Hello there, my name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And we are the founders of Wealth Nation. So this is video number two of our Becoming Your Own Banker series, where Darius and I are reviewing the book, Becoming Your Own Banker by Mr. R. Nelson Nash. So we're gonna kick it off with pages 12 and 13, where it talks about how um, Nelson came to find infinite banking. Mm -hmm. And so just a quick summary, uh, Nelson was actually in the forestry industry. And so he gradually moved to real estate investing which is something we can totally uh, relate to where he learned the power of leverage mm -hmm. and I know that's something that we absolutely understand and get because as soon as we moved from being corporate professionals to being real estate investors that just opened our mind to a whole new world of money the world of financing and the world of banking uh, because when you think about the power of leverage with real estate we were able to invest uh, we were able to purchase properties with zero money down, not using any of our money, flip properties and sell them and keep the profits. Um, but how that actually works is you find an investor who wants to get a larger rate of return, mm -hmm. a greater rate of return. And because you're able to deliver that, you are able to pay them their return once you sell the property and then you keep the rest for yourself. So it actually works out great. You're solving everyone's problems and you're flipping a house in the meantime. Um, so with that process, we then move to infinite banking, which is just another level from what we were already doing. Mm -hmm. And Nelson talks about his epiphany and how he came to find infinite banking at, around that point. Right. Nelson Nash had a similar uh, journey, or we had a similar journey to Nelson Nash, where uh, he realized that the banks, when it comes to financing these deals for him, they didn't care about the asset, they cared about his ability to make payments. Yes. Because those payments were, of course, principal and interest mm -hmm. payments back to the bank. Mm -hmm. So we also kind of realized that when it comes to the power of leverage, we didn't need to have any of our own funds available, we just needed to create the transaction mm -hmm. so that money can change hands. Yes. Uh -huh. And as Nelson went through his journey of understanding uh, real estate and understanding the power of leverage, he had some uh, issues, some personal issues come up with his uh, granddaughter. And it seemed like there was a series of things that happened uh, to him to where he found himself owing $500,000 in, 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 in debt. Yeah. 23% interest. 23% interest on the <laughs> houses that he was purchasing back in the late 70s, early 80s. Now, this put him in a, a situation to where he had to figure something out based on information that he already knew through mm -hmm. being a, a licensed uh, insurance agent through his forestry, through real estate, yeah. is the power of compound interest. Mm -hmm. And he learned that using the, the policies that he already had, he had large premiums that he was already contributing. He needed to create a pool of funds. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was able to do with life insurance create a pool of funds so that instead of borrowing using other finance where he had to pay 23 percent interest he realized that he already had access to uh, a pool of funds through the insurance companies yeah. where he could leverage five to eight percent so that is huge mm -hmm. in his epiphany of understanding the power of opm and what he could do with insurance. Leverage, yes. Yeah, Nelson in the book actually talks about how the power of prayer brought him to this point, and he really feels like he was led to this epiphany, so to speak, through through God, because he was just able to to speak to him in such, such a way and kind of shake him up and say, hey, you're already sitting on an asset, mm -hmm. you just don't know how to properly utilize it. Yeah, and that's the, the story of, of, I'm sure, your lives also. You realize that there's things that you already have access to that you could be utilizing a little different to mm -hmm. put yourself in a better uh, position. Oh yeah, and after understanding infinite banking and just having a better uh, understanding of our spending and the assets that we control, it's just changed everything for us. Yes. Uh, just the power of knowledge mm -hmm. and, and how much money we lose in ignorance, mm -hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. So we wanted to be able to share this uh, opportunity with you to talk about how Nelson Nash came about finding infinite banking because it always seems like we find things when we're in the midst of 
triumph. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was having financial hardships and uh, found this asset that he was sitting on. Mm-hmm. We have been in financial hardships and had to figure out how to best utilize and leverage our assets. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, you know, the, these amazing ideas come from needing to solve a problem. When your back's against the wall. Exactly. <laughs> so again, we just want to make sure that we're sharing our foundation with you when it comes to the infinite banking concept through Nelson and also through our journey as well. Yes. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like this video and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified when we upload new videos. And remember, always remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will.